the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. And let all the earth bless his holy name. For the Lord, he has been good and merciful to us all. He deserves the glory and he deserves all praise. So right where you are, lift your hands. Lift your hands right where you are. You don't have to be in the physical church building to have church. But wherever you are, the church should be in you. That wherever you may be, I don't care what geographical area you may be in, the space, your circumferences, you ought to be able to lift your head and just say, thank you, Father. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your provisions. For making ways out of no ways. Thank you for the job that I still have in the midst of this pandemic where millions and millions of people are employed. Oh, Father, I owe, I owe you a praise. So I thank you on this beautiful morning, this Sabbath morning. Oh, Father, we thank you for your holy Sabbath. For this is the day that you have made. You embedded it in creation and locked it up in time. It will always be the Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath, and the Sabbath will have no end. So we bless your name, Father. We give you thanks. After all of these years, I can truly say, what a friend we have. He 
know what you're going through. Right now, in your space, in your place, why don't you lift your hand and surrender to him. Let him in today. Let him in to say. If you don't know what to say, just say, Father, come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart. Lord, show up. Clean me up. Show me the way that I may receive not only your blessings of eternal life, but that I may receive the promises, all of the promises you have in store for me. Father, this day I surrender, have your own way, have your way in my life. Teach me, O oh Lord, teach me thy ways. Teach me, Father, Teach me and show me which way to go. Lead me to the path of life. Father, that I may enjoy an abundant life. Come on right where you are. And if you don't know what to say, just say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I surrender all. I surrender. My heart, my soul, my mind, my tempo. Lead me, guide me. Whoa. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Whenever you hear me utter the word, hallelujah, I'm not only offering me, offering the Father a high praise, but my hallelujah bears witness of the I amness of Yahweh. That whatever I need him to be, he has been. You know what I'm talking about. The testimonies of the believers can attest to whatever they needed him to be. He has provided. <laughs> he has provided. So that is what my hallelujah is. It consolidates everything into one because in my 64 years of living there has been so many things that he has brought and delivered me out of he brought me through and he delivered me from so many you name it he's done it <laughs> he's almighty Yahweh there is no situation in our lives that he doesn't have the ability to deliver us out of or deliver us from that doesn't diminish his authority or who he is, for he is the sovereign God, the sovereign Yahweh, the sovereign God who has authority. Those that have the Bible or electronic devices or whatever apparatus you choose to use, I want you to turn with me to Matthew's chapter 9, verse 20. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 20. Today we're going to be talking about 
hammering king, faith. Hammering king, faith. And this story is recorded in three of the synoptic gospels found out of the pericope of the Holy Scripture. Chapters Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And this particular passage of story is about a woman who had a blood issue for 12 long years. Now here in the story of these scriptures, it doesn't identify this woman by name. So if you will permit me, I would like to place a tag on her, an identity, and refer to her by her actions that's given in this particular passage of scripture. And I'm going to give her the name, Faith. And you know, back in the days, they just didn't name their babies, Laquisha and Shika and, and all those kind of names. The name have and has significance. And in, in most cases, the name is going to reflect the personality and character of that individual. Nowadays, we name our kids anything. It's all right, ain't it? That's not where I'm trying to go on today. So I chose a name that matches the description of the, uh, the, the account of the event that's given in this passage of Scripture. And I choose the name, her faith. So now you have an idea how the title was birth. Hemorrhaging faith. <laughs> Is that okay? Let's talk about faith just a little bit. Her issue was an unnatural, irregular flowing of the blood outside of her regular menstrual period. Now, time will not permit me to go into more detail to support this narrative, narrative with medical and scientific facts. However, if you continue in the reading of this biblical passage, it will run the all the proof needed to qualify this statement. Besides, I'm of the mindset that some information can be too much information. <laughs> can we say amen? Now for 12 years, faith tried everything to eradicate the problem, but it was too low avail. However, doing this this time during these 12 years, she was relentless, never stopped hoping. She depleted all her funds because she needed to be rid of this thing that was making her so sick. Then one day she heard about the miraculous ministry of Yeshua. And she decided to, to pursue after him, hoping to be among one of those who receive the miracles. One of the things that impressed me about this story as was well as her tenacity. She was determined, she was relentless. 
But in spite of all her trying, all of the failures, as Tremaine Hawkins say, I never lost my faith. She never faith, she never lost her hope. So I don't know when or where she heard about these miraculous stories of Yeshua's ministry, but she heard the Bible say, and she heard about what he was doing, how he was healing the blind. See, he just wasn't doing just ordinary things. He was doing extraordinary things, things that is unheard of during that season and time. If you was blind, you was just blind. If you was deaf, you was just deaf. There was nobody laying on the hands of speaking victory into the lives of people who have become victims to unfortunate circumstances. There was no one healing, opening the eyes of the blind, no one making a lane to walk. Making his death to speak, but here come a man. She heard about all of these things that he was doing. And although she had done all that she could do to fix her problem for 12 years, running from doctors to doctors to doctors to doctors to doctors. Until she had no more money to give. She tried everything that the doctors prescribed to her, but still the issue was still there. Nothing was working. You would think after 12 long years that she would have given up hope. What's the use? I tried everything. Now, I know the scriptures don't say this, but you know, I, I, I'm persuaded there's a possibility that she might even try some home remedies. Anything that someone prescribed for her or offered to her to say that it will eradicate the problem, I'm sure she tried to learn scriptures. So it doesn't say that, but I'm just using my imagination. <laughs> I'm basing it on some of the things that we do ourselves. We try all kind of formulas and all kind of things to obtain healing or positive results or whatever it is that we're going through. We'll try anything. So when she heard about something that was happening in her land that she never heard the whole time she was living. She decided, say, you know what? I don't have no more money because the doctors took all of that. All I have is hope. All I have is hope that this is the man is going to fix my problem. So she started off on another journey, not to a doctor, but to Yeshua, the Jehovah Jireh, who heals every man of sickness and disease. She had nothing to offer him, provided that she was able to reach him. All she had was her story. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Some of us are going through some things and all we have is our story. So she decided that she was going to pursue after this man they call Yeshua. Meantime, at the same time, Yeshua was on an assignment himself. And fortunately, on his way to his assignment, their path will cross. You will discover that later on in the text. Yeshua had just left in the exorcism where he, he 
cast out legions of demons out of a man, and now he's in route to, to Jairus, the ruler's house, and Jairus requests to come to the aid of his daughter, a damsel, who was in distress, who was in need of healing, but died before Yeshua got there. I said, she died before Yeshua arrived. Instead of it being a healing service, it became a resurrection miracle service. Oh, my, my, my. Some of us need a resurrection in our life. Now, let me go back to, let me go back to Faith's story. Let's start to read here. Verse number 20 out of the book of Matthew. Now, remember, there are three recorded stories of this event in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But today, oh, we're going to just come out of Matthew chapter number 9, first, number 20. And behold, a woman which was disease with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the tassel of his garments for she said within herself if I may but touch his garment I shall be made whole. Now you know why I name her faith. Oh, what faith it was to have. Just to believe that even after 12 years of trying everything, she said, if I could just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. The scripture here says tassels. She put faith in action. She kept pursuing. She kept reaching. She was resilient. I started at verse 20, but let me back up a little bit to verse 18. This is right after he was uh, teaching his disciples, you know, some wisdom. <laughs> He said, no man putteth a piece of new cloth into an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles you know, perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Oh, what a teacher Shiva was to his disciples. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I was just thinking about my mind just went uh, somewhere. But it's very important that we, who are, are especially the new converts, it's important that we have mentors in our life to teach us wisdom, to teach us and give us information that's going to grow and prosper us. We all need teachers in our life. Unfortunately, we have many people who are not teachable because they think they know it all. But here, uh, uh, the master teacher demonstrates its wisdom and knowledge through this lesson to his disciples. And behold, verse 20, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood, we just read that for you, how she reached out and touched his comments. Another thing that I mind about her not only her faith, but she was resilient. There were many obstacles that she contended with, but she kept the faith. 
And she had a fight in her. The opposition, what are the chances that she was going to get that close to our Savior? But she got in the press. So in my closing, I'm asking you, my brothers, my sister, what's ailing you? Where are you hemorrhaging? A constant flow of a of a irregular natural thing. <laughs> Some of you it could be that you're in a position where you've been looking for employment for a long time. And it seems like you haven't had any success. Some of you have been unemployed for three to five years. It's not that you haven't been looking. It's that the opportunity passed you by. You've been passed over applications at the application. At the application, does that sound familiar? Just like uh, this woman's faith in this particular story that on today. She went from doctors to doctors to doctors to doctors and still couldn't get a cure. Couldn't eradicate the problem that she had. So my advice to you is, Follow faith action, where she put her faith into action, and she kept pursuing, and she kept reaching. She was resilient. You have to have faith in you. You can't quit. These are the requirements needed to be victorious. Some of you are having problems in your relationship. You're hemorrhaging in your relationship. The answer is that quitting get the divorce. The, 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 the answer is Looking at the situation differently and doing all that you can do according to scriptures and according to your requirement to do your part. You got to put faith in action, keep pursuing, keep preaching, be resilient, have fight in you, fight for your loved one, fight for your family, fight for your marriage. Those are the tools you need to be victorious. So I don't know what your issues are, but whatever they are on today, just know that if you keep reaching, you're going to run into a path where you're going to run into someone that will be able to help you through your situation. That will get you out of the predicament that you're in, but you got to keep fighting and you have to keep reaching. I don't want to care how many times you've been disappointed, but you got to keep reaching. Come on, talk to yourself. Say, keep reaching. Keep reaching. That's what you have to do. You have to keep reaching. You have to be resilient. Don't accept defeat. Don't accept failure. Don't give up. You know the old saying, uh, winner never quit. And a quitter never wins. Father, we pray that these words that falls upon the ears I pray that that not only listen, but 
but to hear and obey. Knowing that whatever problems they are dealing with, they can be rectified by faith. You tell us to cast our cares upon you. You will work it out. Because you know the road we must go. Some things that we are experiencing, it is because you are navigating and positioning us to where we should be. At the time, we may not know what's going on and, and the path that we're trotting, the path you're taking us can be a little uncomfortable and maybe uh, rocky a little. But at the end of this transition, everything is going to work out for our good. So, Father, give us the patience and the faith in you knowing that uh, you're working things out for our good. For I recall some paths that I had to go in. in my musical career, I didn't understand where you were taking me or why you took something from me, some places where I was pretty much comfortable. But Father, you uprooted me out of my comfort zone and put me in a place of discomfort and I didn't understand. But Father, it was working out for my good. I didn't understand at the time, but now, I see where you were seeking me in now. Uh, that uncomfortable place had put me in a position where I'm not only comfortable, but I'm living my best life. So, Father, help us to trust and believe in you. When we can't believe in anything else, but our hope is gone, Father. Let us not forget who you are and what you're capable of doing when you want to do it. So, Father, we rest upon you and, and teach us how to leave, not upon our own understanding, but in you. Father, we thank you for this word. May it bless the many ears that it will rest upon. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, keep 